Joining us for a couple of seconds, the host of Gun Talk. It is heard Sundays here on Keel between 1 and 4, Mr. Tom Gresham. Hey, Mr. Tom, been a while. How have you been? Good morning, guys. Been a little bit busy, but, uh, you know, it's all well and good, as you know. Well, so I well. had a thousand questions to start off, and then I was kind of kind of trolling your Facebook page, some other stuff this morning, and you said, I'm commenting on yesterday's Arlington shooting on my Twitter page, so that'll just be my first question. What have you commented on? What kind of feedback have you gotten? What are your thoughts? Well, I started early in the day, and remember that with Twitter, it's almost it's a continuous timeline feed, and so as you know, things were breaking and we were hearing things, I was making comments, and the first thing I said was, this is, uh, they will find out, and this is long before we knew anything, I said, they will find out that this is a leftist loony who has bought into the hyperbole that we've been exposed to, and then, of course, later on, we found out that's true, and I said, yeah, this is a... This shooting is a logical extension of what the left has been doing and talking about and calling for. And, you know, when you see a pro-Trump a protest or, or, you know, march or something for Trump, it's always quiet and respectful. And people are walking by and shaking the hands of police officers. And when you see an anti-Trump protest, you have people wearing masks and throwing bricks at policemen. So the shooting yesterday was just simply a logical extension of all of that. You know, I had asked, we had Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana, of course, on yesterday, and I said, I asked him basically the same question. I said, you've got Kathy Griffin, a mock beheading of the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. You've got the play, the re, uh, the redo of Julius Caesar in New York City, Donald Trump, who is assassinated in the play. Right. And I said, do you think that this sort of open hatred of the President and of Republicans has has anything to do with it. And, and Senator Kennedy said, yeah, you ought to see some of the stuff I get. Sure. And I'm sure they are, they're all getting threats. Uh, and, you know, there will be those who say, no, no, Rachel Maddow has nothing to do with this. Of course she does. You know, and of course Kathy, Gri Kathy Griffith does. And, of course, all the calls for resist and violence and pushback, all of that has an effect. But in the end, I mean, come on, we have to say, there's really only one person responsible for this, and that's the guy who was pulling the trigger out there. And you know, my takeaway, there are several on this, but people say, oh, what could you do with a handgun? Well, two good people with handguns saved the lives of an awful lot of people. So, yes, they went up, two people with handguns went up and went against a guy with a rifle and did a great job. It's just amazing what you can do when you have the right tools. And, and I repeat this often, you are trained. I got a text yesterday morning in the middle of it all, and it says, so if I'm understanding this right, good people with guns saved lives this morning. Yeah, I mean, come on. We keep saying it over and over. The only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is for a good guy with a gun to show up. In this case, and look, this guy had planned to die. He knew that's what was going to happen, but he was figuring he would get five to ten minutes or six time. If he had had that, there would have been a half a dozen to a dozen people dead. Be only because there were people on the scene with guns to keep his head down for a while and then to be able to move in and shoot him. But trust me, I mean, this guy was hunting Republicans. He was out there to kill them all. This was an assassination. So you know, people say, well, should I really carry a gun? I say, are you nuts? Of course you should carry a gun. I mean, well, what is your alternative when something like this happens and this is going to happen again and again and you're in the middle of it? What are you going to do? If you don't have a gun and you don't know how to use it, you simply are prey. Describe the guns that this guy had as compared to what he was shot with. Capitol Police don't carry around rifles, correct? No, uh, and I think he had, I, I, mean, I don't even know what the model was. I think he had a semi-automatic rifle and a handgun. But basically, it's just basically it's a rifle and a, a handgun. I go back to, yes, it would be, I would rather have a rifle if I have to you know, get into a fight. But nobody lets us carry around rifles into Walmart. But we can carry guns, you know, handguns into Walmart and every other place. And again, I mean, look, if you are a good shot, if you train and you practice, I have no problem hitting a target with a handgun at uh, 35 to 50 yards, you know, halfway across the football field. No problem at all. So if you know what you're doing, you can help. At the very least, you can keep somebody's head down while they're shooting at people. And people say, well, that's just terrible. I, I hate to live in a, 
a place like that. I'm sorry, you already do. Tom, what would have happened with those congressional members hiding in the dugout had they not had Steve Scalise's security protection there? Do you think this guy would have walked to that dugout and just kept firing? Of course. That's what he was there to do. He was there to kill as many Republicans, as many conservatives as he could. That was the the goal. And he was moving in on the dugout. He had them all holed up. He had them in one place. And he was going to simply execute all of them. I mean, that's what was going to happen. His plan and was to walk down. The, pardon me. His plan was to walk down the hill with his semi-automatic weapon, unimpeded, box them in in the dugout, and and execute them all. Is this going to happen again, Tom? How do we stop it? That's the, the question. Is when you say how do you stop it? I think you probably mean how do you prevent it? Right. You don't. You cannot prevent it, but you can't stop it. Uh, you stop it once it happens by shooting the sob. It's as simple as that. The only way you stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And the only question that people have to come up with, the answer is, how long do I want to wait? In other words, how many people am I willing to let die before a good guy with a gun shows up? Do I care that the good guy with a gun is wearing a uniform? Or am I okay with it being me or her over there or the person next to me? pulling out a gun and stopping this guy because that's the difference the five or ten minutes while we wait for somebody who's wearing the proper clothing i.e uniform versus doing it ourselves the difference is people dead 